morning, everybody. I hope you're having a great day today. My name's Cody, and I want to thank you so much for stopping by. So today we are inside as it is quite nasty out there. So my plan is to get a little bit of work done in here, specifically pertaining to our cabbage here. So my plan is to get that turned into sauerkraut. It's a really easy project. It's a great way also to help preserve your cabbage and uh, maybe add some flavor to it as well. So if you've never done it before, it's very simple. If I can do it, anybody can do it. So that's the name of the game today, is to get this cabbage all chopped up and processed into sauerkraut. So I've got my tea here. This is the chamomile that we grew on the farm this summer. So it's always nice to, when you're inside, have something nice and warm to, to drink on a cold day. But uh, the fact that you grew it yourself is another really nice benefit as well. So anyway, without any further ado, let's get uh, these cabbages going. Now, before you start any project, uh, in the kitchen especially, you want to make sure that everything is properly sanitized and disinfected. So I'm just using uh, warm water with a bleach solution here. Now that's going to help kill any uh, bacteria that's on here, which is always a good thing to, to do. So normally I use these fermenters. Um, I used to make uh, a lot of homemade wine. I um, haven't done that in a few years, but it still kept the fermenters around, and that's basically the process that we're going to go for today is uh, fermentation. So we've got a hole here cut out for our airlock, which basically just sits right there and allows all the gases to come out without any air getting back into the container. So it's really handy to have these little guys around, but I'm just going to get them quickly disinfected here. There we go. And uh, we should be good to go, so pour out that bleach water. Now, probably going to do a good triple rinse on this, just to make sure that all that residue is off. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is grab your cabbage. Now you might need to peel off a layer or two if the leaf doesn't feel that good. So this one's a little bit spongy, so I'm just going to peel that off until we get to a nice dense head. And that looks pretty good. Also any damaged leaves you might want to just peel off as well. The next thing you want to do is quarter your cabbage. So with a nice sharp knife, cut her in half. And then in a quarter, so half the half. Go, and then you got this core bit here that kind of holds all the leaves together. You want to cut that out too. There we go. And then you just toss that in your recycling bin. And then the last thing you want to do is just chop it as finely as you like. So um, I like a nice thinner cabbage. Uh, coleslaw, so get it nice and thin for you. Okay, that looks good. And then we're going to put it into our fermenter. So that just goes right in there. There we go. Now we repeat that same chopping process for all of these guys. So uh, I'm just going to speed up this little part here. So we just got all the cabbage chopped and weighed, and now the last thing to do, oh, I guess one of the last things to do, is to add our salt. So um, it's good to use kosher salt, it doesn't have any additives in it, like the iodine or anything that table salt has, so it helps uh, with the sauerkraut process. I don't know how, that's just what I've been told to use, so that's what I use. And anyway, you want around 2% salt content by weight, so get your cabbage weighed, and then you want to uh, times it by 0 0.02, get you the 2%, and then you add that to the sauerkraut. So I'm going to get the salt weighed and mix into our fermenter.
So now that our salt is added, it's going to start releasing a lot of the juice from the cabbage. So as we're doing this, I just give it some good squeezes to help break down our cabbage. And we'll mix this for, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes, 10, 20 minutes. Eventually, we'll start to get a lot of juice forming. And the idea is you want it so that your cabbage is sitting entirely under its own juices or to ferment. So I'll jump back in here once things start to break down a little bit. Don't know if you guys can hear this or not, but the cabbage or this. Starting to make some noises. That sounds fantastic. After a few minutes of pounding and uh, squishing all this together, we have a nice brine going in here. And I don't know if it'll show up on camera or not, but when I push it down, all the cabbage now is uh, touching or submerged under that brine. It's still not quite where I'd like it to be, but it's getting late here. So I'm gonna let this sit for a day. Just let that salt release more of those juices overnight and I'll check back in on it in the morning and uh, just make sure that it's completely covered. But I'm going to put the airlock on this for tonight and uh, yeah, we will check back in on the morning. Hopefully we've got more, uh, more of that cabbage juice released. Welcome back everybody. So it's been about two weeks since we had our cabbage all cut up and put into the fermenter here. So let's open it up and check it out. So um, you got the airlock here. I don't know where I left off in the last video. Like I say, it's been about two weeks. So let's get this thing cracked open. But airlock here is going to allow any of the off gases to breathe out. So basically gases can come out, but nothing can get in. And this lid is nice and tight on there. So we don't have any extra air getting in, which is good. And then one thing that I did off camera too, let's put that aside, is I added a weight uh, in here to keep the cabbage down and the brine or the juices above that. So basically all I've done is taken a food safe bag here, let's see if I can show you. Food safe bag and filled it up with water and that acts as a weight so it will keep all the cabbage below the surface of the brine. That does a couple of things, it helps to eliminate uh, air contact with any of the cabbage that might be sitting above the brine and you might run into mold problems if the cabbage is exposed to the air. So adding a weight to keep your cabbage below the brine is important. If you do get mold on your cabbage I've already just pick it out it's not going to be a big problem but uh, a weight like this helps to alleviate that problem. So let's get this weight out of here and see what we're left with. This is just a food safe bag that I filled with water. Let's hopefully this falls out here nice and easily. Okay, there we go. Excellent, and what we're left with now is, let's see if I can see that, yeah. Now what we're left with here is our sauerkraut. Now this has been in for about two weeks and it smells unbelievable. And there we go. So after that weight has been taken off, this is what we're left with here. So I think, I can't remember exactly if it was four or five cabbages, it doesn't matter. But this is what we're left with here. And the smell is just fantastic. It's got that nice, um, soury kraut, sour smell to it. I don't know how to describe it. It just smells fantastic. I'm just gonna give it a try here. Take a little bit there. <laughs> mm. That's unbelievable. It's amazing to me that just water and salt mixed in here for a couple of weeks to ferment the flavor is just uh, fantastic it's better than any of the store-bought stuff i've ever had typically it's some of that stuff is just mixed with uh, vinegar to get that sour flavor but real fermented uh, sauerkraut here unbelievable that's fantastic i think it's done it could probably go up to they say you know anywhere from two to four weeks uh, for a ferment but I like where this guy's at right now, so I'm gonna get them into these jars. You saw me wash them earlier. Anytime you're doing a ferment, I find anyway, uh, cleanliness is the most important thing to focus on because you don't want to give that mold or that bacteria 
a good environment to grow on. So that's why I try to keep my cabbage below the brine level and try to keep everything as sterile as possible just to prevent any of those uh, nasty bugs kind of getting in there and growing. So yeah, last thing to do with this now is to get it uh, put away in these little jars. So here's an up close look at the cabbage here. You can see that liquid there, that's the brine. That's what we're after. So we're gonna start packing these. These are the jars that we cleaned. And I'm just gonna start popping the cabbage in there. Now ideally, you want to get this packed in there as tight as possible. So I'm gonna do this a few times for the fill and just really, really get it in there. And then I'll come back after and top off with some brine just to make sure that all the cabbage is completely covered with that brine. That's going to help uh, keep it preserved for a little bit longer. There we go, one jar. It's just under a liter, but uh, isn't that a thing of beauty, eh? The smell is just unreal. I'm super excited. That's. I know it's a thing that we can do, you know, ferment our cabbage and make sauerkraut and that sort of thing, but it's just, uh, it always amazes me when you try something, because you never know how it's going to turn out, and with the way this has turned out, it's just fantastic. The other thing, too, is a cost saving, you know, I know right now, all over the world, people are struggling with uh, food security and those sorts of things, so just having the understanding and the knowledge and a little bit of practice to preserving food and making it go a bit longer, um, it's, I think it's super important, not to mention the, the probiotics that this is packed with as well go a long way to helping our gut health and our overall health as well. So if you haven't tried making your own sauerkraut, I'd highly recommend it. If someone like me can do it, anyone can do it. I guarantee you that. And there we go, we got the nine jars all packed up and there's still a little bit of that uh, brine here. Now you don't want to throw this out. Um, what you want to do is make sure you top up all your jars so that there's uh, full of brine right to the top. You can also keep this in a separate jar and you can use this as a, as a start for your next batch of sauerkraut. So it kind of gives it a little bit of a jump start. You can also just drink it if you want. It, uh, it tastes fantastic. And I think it would make a great salad dressing as well, but uh, that doesn't matter. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna get these topped up. go we have the sauerkraut all into their jars now I just need to get them labeled and put into the fridge and they should be good for quite a while I think it'll be neat to kind of see how these guys go and uh, shelf life and all that sort of thing but a great little project to do especially as the weather starts to turn here on us um, if you've got cabbage you can always pick it up too at the store it's quite cheap and uh, yeah it's I'm blown away at just how tasty this homemade uh, sauerkraut is and uh, relatively cheap very good for you and just a great way to add flavor a great side dish I like to just eat it by itself but um, yeah and then I do have a little bit of the brine left over here so I do have a few more cabbage that I'm gonna start another batch here with pretty quick and I'm just going to use this as a, uh, a little bit of a start to the next batch so I have a little bit of extra liquid to use but that's pretty much it I'm gonna leave it there for the rest of the, for the I'm gonna leave it there so I want to thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me through this process. It's been fun. It's not often I do kind of a two-weeker here, but um, I've really enjoyed this, and I hope you were able to learn something along the way and uh, just enjoy this process with me. So until next time, everyone, I hope you have a great day, and uh, take care. I'll see you later. Bye now. Now, if I was doing this uh, commercially or with the intent of selling it, I wouldn't be um, eating as much as I am as I'm doing it. And I definitely wouldn't uh, drink this right from here if I'm going to use it in someone else's. So big difference between what I'm doing here for myself and then if I were to do it uh, commercially. But this stuff is just so tasty. Even the juice. Hmm. I can't even describe it. It's like a, a really mild vinegar flavor with a little bit of a zing to it, but it just tastes fantastic. And like I say, it always blows my mind that it's just cabbage and salt, and that's it. And you get these complex flavors full of and, uh, probiotics and um, all that fantastic stuff. It's really, really good for you. So uh, yeah, it's just a... Uh... <laughs> Mind-boggling. You have to try it. Honestly, don't worry about screwing it up because that's how we learn. You absolutely need to try doing some cabbage uh, sauerkraut here. It's such an easy thing to do. It's super fun in the taste, the smell. I mean, my wife doesn't like sauerkraut, so um, if you're like that, perhaps maybe don't try it. But even if you don't like it, it's definitely worth trying. 
and who knows, you might surprise yourself, right? So yeah, give it a go. Mm. I'll get this in the fridge before I drink it all. So anyway, leave it there, guys. Have a great day.